Boogie Pop Phantom anime series poses an interesting question late in the series. And by the way, this is going to be a spoiler full video. The question is, who is worth saving? Now, this is a question that we don't like to ask in modern society. In Boogie Pop Phantom, there are these different people with different abilities. And the Boogie Pop Phantom has this duty to save these people that have these abilities. Um, but she doesn't, it doesn't save everyone. Some people can't be saved through their own poor decisions. And one person in particular isn't saved intentionally. Why? Before we answer that, let's dive into this question. Um, so, Boogie Pop Phantom includes these characters that are manifesting powers that need, that, that, that humanity will need in the future. Some things need preservation. Some things need cultivation. And Boogie Pop Phantom is doing that. These powers manifested too early. But a power is nothing without a tool to direct it. And so the question becomes, what if a useful power is housed in the body of somebody who will misuse that ability? And we see some people who've done some pretty unpleasant things with their powers, particularly the kid in episode two. The, the, teenage, the teenage boy in episode two. They get saved. They get preserved. <clears throat> Even though he misused his power pretty consistently. So why is he saved while other characters are not? I think we can answer that question by looking at who wasn't saved. And for that, we turn to an episode about um, Panaru. And of course the question of who exactly is Panaru is a little complex in that episode. So we'll focus on, on the, you know, the girl who believes she's talking to Panaru throughout the entire episode. And the end of the episode involves that scene I've, I mentioned several times where she asks Boogie Pop to take her and Boogie Pop Phantom refuses. Says, you're not worth saving. Why is that? And I think the answer to that comes in what she's done. How she has approached her ability. If you look at the, the boy from episode 2, he is... He was using his ability to help people. He thought he was helping people with his power. When he found out what he was actually doing, it horrified him. So his power was focused outward. The Panaru episode was about retreating in on yourself, was on distancing yourself from reality. In fact, the main character had become so um, traumatized by the loss of her friend that she had created this fantasy reality within herself, where she spends her time with this dead friend, and wasn't helping people. In fact, we see some scenes in particular where she sees people who are suffering and she passes them by, because the only way to deal with reality, the best way to deal with reality, is to distance yourself from it. That, that way you, you never feel pain. And of course, as we know, that's not true. That's not the right way to deal with the world. So Panaru is all about isolation. The other characters, even when they're misusing their powers, they're doing so to help other people. And that seems to be a theme of Book of Phantom. You see that throughout the entire series. It's about connections with other people. Um, the problem, one of the problems with Poom Poom is that he is isolating these people from the rest of the world. Um, and Pum Pum has to be stopped 
because Poom Poom is regressing people to a point before they had those abilities, before they could be productive members of society, when they're just kids playing. You know, playing is fun, but it doesn't get anything done. And that's the big problem with that character and, and with what that character is doing. So I think that is central. Um, the people who are worth saving are the ones who help other people. The ones who actually make an effort and get out there and do things. Even when it's not easy, even when it's not obvious. And um, that is, I think, a, a central thing um, uh, to the show. So I think that is what Blue Pop Phantom is, is all about. It's about focusing on other people and helping other people. At least in that central plot element. And this is an important thing, I think, is to realize that Boogie Pop Phantom is not about presenting an absolute, simple answer to all life's problems. It is about presenting different viewpoints about reality and then commenting on the utility and validity and effectiveness of those viewpoints. Um, talking about you know, retreat from reality. Talking about <laughs> um holding yourself to a certain expectation of behavior that is too much for yourself. You know, famously, the, you know, the, the girl who takes piano lessons, uh, and then when she, she doesn't get the, you know, the big um, pat on the back from the particular music instructor, uh, commits suicide because of how you know, she sees what her parents have sacrificed for her without realizing that that's not the point. You know, they love her. They want her to be happy. The piano lessons are a vehicle to do that. If she doesn't take, you know, if she doesn't do well in the, in the, in the, in the piano lessons, that's fine. Um, you know, but she doesn't, she doesn't realize that. And, and she kills herself, and so she can't be saved. It's done. It's, it's over. That's one of the horrible things about that, that scene, about that, that episode, is you realize she's beyond a saving. It's over. She's taken the ultimate step. Um, so you see that in multiple different episodes of different characters having different outlooks on life, and we see what impact those have on them and other people around them. So Boogie Pop Phantom is saying, help other people. You know, do that. But that also, there are lots of ways of doing that, and you have to find your way. You have to use your own powers, supernatural or otherwise, to do that. Um, and it's complicated. It's hard. There are lots of ways of abusing our powers, supernatural or not. Um, but the important thing is that we look for ways to help other people. So, hope that's helpful. A lot more coming up about Boogie Pop Phantom, and um, see you in those videos.